Welcome guys to Shanghai. <laughs> Hello. I don't really think I'm allowed to do that, since it's the palace of the king and queen. But good morning, guys. It's another beautiful day in Indonesia, and it's time to say goodbye to Pontianak because now I'm heading further in to West Kalimantan in hopes of finding a place called Kapuas Hulu, where I will hopefully find orangutans, great national parks, and the Dayak tribe. Actually, I have to keep my eyes on the road here. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm allowed to drive out here. Okay, uh, this is not what I had planned. <laughs> Get me off of this road. I then set out on the Trans Kalimantan Highway, and I quickly noticed that the landscape and the views were a lot different from Sumatra. Much more green, less mountains, and longer distances in between the smaller villages. Because Kalimantan is actually 57% larger than Sumatra, but with only one-fourth of the population. The majority in Kalimantans are Muslims. I however kept seeing a lot of churches, as West Kalimantan is actually the province in all of Kalimantan with the most Christians. It was one of those rides where I didn't feel like documenting a lot, but rather being present and enjoying the ride with some good music as this was actually my first proper ride on the new KTM 790 Adventure R. Yes, we're in Kalimantan, baby! And 200 kilometers and four and a half hours of driving later, I had followed the Kapuas River to the city of Sango. Good morning guys, in this episode I'm in the city of Sangao and Martin is right here behind me because now we're gonna be staying in Sangao for a few days, I have a lot of editing to do but today I feel like going out into the city and yeah kind of see what it's about before we continue the journey further west up towards a place called Kapuas Hulu. So the majority of the people living here in Sangao are Malayu or Dayak people here. So here they speak their own language, Sangao, they speak Malayu and they speak Dayak. And of course they speak Bahasa Indonesia. So uh, I thought today let's just go out into the city, take a look around and then we simply continue the tour towards Kapuas Hulu. Let's do it. Let's get on Machan, start them up. Guys, let's go out and say good morning to Sangao. Ah, hello guys. <laughs> ah, so this is the place I wanted to show you guys. The Syria Syria Negara Istana Syria Negara Sangao. Let's try and park over here. All right guys, so I have made a small stop here down by the waterfront because right behind me is the Istana Surya Negara, 
which is apparently an old palace. Um, when there was a kingdom here, the Sultan would live here and apparently it's built more than 400 years ago. So this palace right here is one of the main attractions here in uh, Sangao. But I saw that there's a small cafe over here, so I'm just gonna try and uh, stop by and see if maybe there are some locals that can tell me a bit more about Sangao. Because actually, I don't know a lot. Bye. Bye. Asli dari sini? Oh, asli. Asli. Saya dari Denmark, Pak. Denmark. Denmark. Lama di Indonesia. Sudah dua tahun, Pak. Kalian lagi ngapain? Lagi ngapain? Santai. Santai saja. Santai. Santai. Kopi, rokok. Ah. Beginilah hidup ya. Banyak mati hidup. And this is why sometimes it's good just to go out and talk to the locals, you know? Because when I was reading on Wikipedia, it just said that it was a Sultan Palace, more than 400 years old. But what I didn't know, and what I just learned from the guys here, is that apparently there's still a king and queen of Sangao. And they live right in there. I just thought maybe it was a museum, so I just parked my bike in there. I don't really think I'm allowed to do that, since it's the palace of the king and queen, but... Hopefully they don't mind. So yeah guys, in case you didn't know, there's still a king and queen here in Sangkhau. Hello guys. Ah, you know, I'm really digging the, the vibe here in Sangkhau. It's very chill. Hello. And I have yet to see a single other foreigner here. So I'm getting a ton of looks here, which is okay. Now I want to try and see if I can find a boat because I haven't been on the water of Kapuas to my Kapuas. So let's try and see if we can find some guy that will take me out on a boat. So I'm just sitting here with some guys. Chepurai. Chepurai. And Anis. And uh, they're teaching me a bit of Bahasa Dayak because the majority of the people in all of Kalimantan they come from Dayak. There is various Dayak tribes. Then, kalau bahasa Dayaknya Onihaga. Oh, itu bahasa Dayak. Ah, ini kawan ni, ya banyak tato ini. Onihaga. Oh, itu Dayak tato. Ya, Onihaga. So in bahasa Dayak, it's Onihaga. It means how are you? Onihaga. Di Sangau ada bahasa Sangau. Bahasa Sangau. Dan apa apa kabar bahasa Sangau? Apai? Apai? Berita. Berita? Yeah. Itu artinya apa kabar? Apa kabar? Quite a bit different from the normal <laughs> apa kabar. Victor Axel Ten. Morten Bros Hansen. Ada lagi? Pitingos. So even out here in some of the very remote areas of West Kalimantan, they still know Victor Axelsen, Antonsen and Hans Christian Wittinghus. That's most game key. Oh, bagus lah. Okay, guys. Terima kasih ya. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. All right, guys. So I have paid a local fifty thousand to take me out on his boat, so we can see a bit of Kapuas River. Oh yeah. Oi, I have to be careful where I step here with all the camera gear. Siapa namanya bro? Ardian. Hah? Ardian. Ardian. Ardian Mutu. Ardian. Salam kenal. So I paid him, yeah, fifty thousand, so we could get some oil for the some benzene for the boat. From Denmark, bro. Denmark. 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 Kapal aman ya? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. This is floating, floating yeah? Floating. <laughs> oh. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay. Okay. Let's go out, guys, on Sungai Kapuas. See you guys. Let's do it.
All right, guys, and we are on the water. This is a massive river. They're using the Kapuas River as well to transport a lot of the logging. A lot of the trees that are cut down deep in the jungle of West Kalimantan are being transported on this river as well, all the way down to Pontiana. Because one of the things that we'll be covering in this series as well is some of the logging. A lot of forest is being cut down in West Kalimantan. They were producing a ton of palm oil, also called sawit, which is good in the sense that it provides work to a lot of Indonesians. They make a lot of money from it, but it's also not good for the forest, right? Because they're clearing a lot of natural forest to make the palm oil plantations. So, yeah, it, 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 it's um, this is something I want to cover more. But today, it's just nice to be out on the water for a bit. The river is actually completely empty. It's only me and, and my captain here. Not too bad for a Tuesday or Wednesday or I think it's a Saturday, whatever day it is. Hello guys! Hello! And this is why I sometimes like exploring from the riverside because this is the places that you will not see if you're just driving on the main roads. Okay, so we're making a small stop here because Artian, he invited me into his family's house and it is a rather conventional <laughs> way to get here. <laughs> oh, phew. Okay, let's go inside and say hi. So this is a typical small village here of the city of Sangao. Oh yeah. And Artian is 24. Yeah. Yes. 24. 24. Apa? Ya, Apa kabar? Baik. Salam kenal saya Chris. Uh, Artian kapten saya. Pantu saya bikin video. Oh iya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Boleh? Boleh masuk. Oke, okay, makasih, Pak. Makasih. Oke. Okay. Anyway, you go in Indonesia. You meet people like this who will just invite you into your house and yeah ini pertama kali ada youtuber di sini ya ya youtuber apa youtuber bule youtuber bule ya sila 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 ya makasih pak kerjaan apa pak apa house working oh building building ah oke strong ya <laughs> it was a hot day, nearing 36 degrees, so they offered me cold water and coffee and we had a lovely chat for about an hour about everything from building houses to traveling Indonesia. Jadi bro, belajar bahasa Inggris di sekolah atau? Yeah, student. Student, yeah? It's cool. From watch YouTube also? Yeah, yeah, you too. Good, good, good. So, guys, if you want to learn English, don't forget to study in school and nonton YouTube, yeah. Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> Jadi ini kampung namanya apa? Sungai Ranas. Sungai Ranas. Sungai Ranas. And it's almost time for Saturday prayer here at 11 o'clock. So then they will just go to pray, and then it's time to go back to the big city. I love coming to these local spots, you know. Oh, ba, apa kabar? Cuci lagi ya. Berapa orang tinggal di sini, bro? 400 keluarga. 400 keluarga. Senang tinggal di sini? Ya, senang. Yeah. There was one woman who had lived here a bit longer than most, so I had a small chat with Nene as she called herself, which means grandmother. Berapa umur tinggal di sini? Sembilan tahun. Eh, sembilan puluh. Sembilan puluh tahun? Iya. Akhirnya itu sampai sebab suami, sampai tua, tinggal di sini. Ini rumah ini. Ini rumah anak, ini sempat ini, ibu asli rumah. 
di belah laut ini. Oke Bu, terima kasih banyak ya. Tos. <laughs> Tos. Iya. <laughs> So we had to hurry back now because the rain is pulling up and we wanted to make sure we got across back across the river before it starts raining a lot. Then tomorrow we're gonna continue to a place called Sintang. Alright. Tomorrow we're gonna continue to a place called Sintang and then we're gonna go to Kapuas Hulu. And as you may recall, I had parked Machan, my bike, next to the king's house. And when I came back, someone told me to come inside. And as I sat and waited, I noticed the aquariums with the arowanas, Indonesia's most expensive fish. And I then realized who I was about to meet. Selamat datang di kota Sanggau. Mr. Chris, saya sedikit bercerita tentang sejarah Kerajaan Sanggau, Mr. Chris. Jadi Kerajaan Sanggau ini mulai berdiri kurang lebih tujuh abad yang lalu, tujuh tujuh ratus tahun yang lalu. Karena penobatan Sultan pertama di di Kerajaan Sanggau ini kurang lebih tiga belas lapan puluh. Jadi tiga Sultan di sana hijrah ke sini. Hijrah ke di dalam kota Sanggau ini mendirikan kerajaan di dalam kota Sanggau. Karena kan mungkin pemikiran dari segi akses, akses transportasi dulu kan transportasi kita kan lewat sungai aja, lewat sungai Kepuas. Jalan darat ini tidak ada. Abis tiga Sultan merintah sana, mereka hijrah ke sini. Hijrah, ya berganti lah antara waktu, antara segala ganti bapa, anak. Sampailah ke generasi saya. Saya ini generasi yang ke-25. Generasi 25 sebagai sultan atau raja di Sanggau. Setelah Indonesia merdeka, singkat cerita ya, mengkritiknya, singkat cerita, seluruh kekuasaan tanah dan air, apa itu kita serahkan kepada Republik, bergabung kepada Republik Indonesia. Bukti bahwa kita ini, sama-sama menjadi negara Republik Indonesia. Semenjak itulah hilanglah kekuasaan sebagai seorang raja itu diganti dengan kekuasaannya oleh seorang bupati. Sanggau ini luasnya mengkris kurang lebih 12.800 km persegi. Dua kali negara Brunei. Kabupaten Sanggau. Wow. <laughs> suku yang terbesar itu suku Dayak sama suku Melayu. Kalau saya dari Melayu. 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 Jadi bisa bahasa Melayu. Bisa bahasa Melayu. Bang Kris nak konai lagi. Konai lagi. Nak konai. Konai. Nak konai. Nak konai. Mau ke mana lagi? Mau ke mana lagi? Itu bahasa Melayunya. Apa itu berita? Apa itu berita? Oh baik. Baik. Alhamdulillah sehat. The king no longer holds any official powers, as it's today a customary title. But it seems that Pagusti Aman or Pate are just grateful for being able to keep his family's legacy alive. Bu, datang ke Sangau. Terima kasih. Sama sama Pate. In the afternoon, I had been invited to stop by a local wedding. But this wasn't just a local wedding, because it was a Dayak French wedding. Baptiste from France and Susan from Sangau had met each other when they were both studying in Taiwan. And they had traveled all the way back to Sangau to celebrate the wedding with Susan's family and relatives. And in Indonesian fashion, there was a live band and a lot of guests who had come for the big celebration. And as per Dayak tradition, Baptiste wore traditional Dayak clothing with a mandau, the Dayak sword, on his side. Max, Baptiste's brother, later shared with me this photo, where they earlier had worn the traditional French wedding attire as well. I love weddings, 
because everyone is just so happy. The music, the vibe, and the love in the air, of course. So thank you, Baptiste and Suzanne, for letting me be a part of your special day. I wish you all the best for the future. It had been yet another adventurous day in Indonesia. But before I started packing for the journey to Kapua Sulu, there was one more thing I had to see. Because apparently Sao City is big on sports and exercise. And a great part of that spirit lived on the top of my hotel. I stay in a lot of different hotels and cities, but it's very rare to come across a gym with high quality equipment and a fitness community like this. So I'll end today's video with this. If you're ever considering to join a gym or going to a gym, then do it. Don't be shy. We all started somewhere, no matter our weight or size. It's healthy for our body and our mind. And if you always greet the people you meet, you might end up making new friends. Hello. <laughs> And that's gonna be it for this episode guys thank you so much for watching stay tuned for the next episode where i continue the journey to sintan and simetau in capua sur guys so many of these river crossing so a day on the road not eating lunch and then getting some nasi goreng. It's proper good. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of water here. Ketemu lagi di mana? Mandalika. <laughs>